piece your problems is super helpful, but like seeing it's like a roadmap, I feel like okay. really, really helps. Yeah, like it works uh, helpful yeah. for me also. And then the stuff you said earlier about being like Brooke wasn't there. <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I shouldn't joke about that. That's all right. I think we're. I guess I really gotta watch this video now, don't I? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's right. It's taped. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So we started out with a uh, battery here. Uh, 10 volts, and this was 0.05. It was better back to the original. Now I went to double voltage. And PQ on screen. I can manipulate cap on. Uh, start out with no dielectric in between also. Dielectric A, uh, voltage is battery, and the distance between the plates. Now, realistically, I guess if you wanted to manipulate the area from a realistic point of view, think back to the lab, you can start to shift them apart so that there's less overlap. All right, so we want a double voltage. So if I just crank up the, the battery. battery up to 20 volts, that's not really gonna help because we're, def we're gonna be doubling the current stored on the plates. So we're keeping Q constant, is that? Yep, I want okay. Q to say constant, and I don't want to double the voltage. Double the voltage. Okay. Kappa is one, right? Because you took away the dialogue. Right, Kappa is one at the moment. Currently it's one. There's definitely something that we're going to have to do if we want to double the voltage. And keep the charge the same. Would you have to increase the distance? Yeah, I was thinking the distance mm -hmm. would need to change. Well, walk me through that. Um, well, if you kept the distance the way it is, right. and you cranked up the voltage, then the charge has to change. Right. Um, so to keep it constant, you'd have to increase that distance. Um, see if that works. It has something to do with capacitance too. But the capacitance, the capacitance is going to stay the same, which is why you would have to increase that distance. There. If you increase it, oh wait. My my mind, I think missed a beat. I was saying capacitance is going to stay the same because you're not changing the capacitance on the plates. If we but change the distance between it, we're definitely changing the capacitance. Yeah. If we change one of the physical attributes of it, if we change only one physical attribute of it, like the distance, then the capacitance will change. Okay. Oh yeah, there's our formula. Yeah, the okay. this one right here. So, but you were suggesting doubling the voltage and then doubling yeah. the distance? Yeah, we'd have to double the distance of plates. So if we double the voltage, then what else changes? It double the voltage or the distance, but because like, she was suggesting both, right? Or, yeah. or doubling the distance to double the voltage? No, we're doing okay. Crank the crank the, crank the, crank the power supply up to twenty volts. Okay, and then take the plates and separate them. Okay, yeah. But when I, given a problem like this, you're allowed to do multiple things and then measure it at the end. That doesn't have to. It's not an immediate. Oh, I flip this one switch and everything changes. So, so if this becomes twenty volts. And I know capacitance is Q over delta V. If I do nothing else, then well, my capacitance would still stay the same, but I would double the charge. So this would automatically be two Q sub zero. Sort of the initial charge, the initial voltage, the initial electric field. And the initial capacitance. 
So I want two times the initial voltage, and Q is equal to V sub zero. Wait, can you take a quick moment to explain your notation? I feel like I'm, I'm not clear. The sub, the sub zero is just the original. The, this is, we set up the problem, this is what, what we started with. Okay. The P and the T is plates and, and total. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it. Thank you. I thought that if we just doubled the distance that that, like, is it, the end goal that we're trying to get to is double, doubling the voltage at the end. Is that right? And keeping the charge the same. Keeping the charge the same. I thought that if we, okay, yeah. I thought that if we just doubled the distance that it would double the voltage. Yeah. But we're hooked to a battery, so that is not gonna, if we're hooked to the battery, then no matter what we do, if all I do is just change the distance, uh -huh. it's still 10 volts between the two plates. Okay. Even though, okay. I guess I was looking at the um, formula with the, the delta V equals electric field total times the delta x delta x yeah yeah so if we're looking at that one i'm going to just get sloppy with the notation that's okay if we double the distance but it's still hooked to a battery my voltage the voltage is set as long as it's hooked to a battery okay okay if we don't do anything to the battery so that means the electric field would have to be cut in half. Okay. Gotcha. So, okay. so if we double the distance, if we do the two things that she suggested, I was thinking a different route, this might work. So if I double the distance, I'm, and I crank it up to 20. So my voltage is gonna be 20 now just because I, I set the power supply to that. If I double the distance, my electric field, let's do it step by step. If I double the distance, back up. If I double the voltage by changing the power supply, my distance was still the same. I haven't changed that yet. So that means my electric field will double. So if this becomes twice what it was before, this is two, twice the original, D is the same as it was before. My electric field has to double. Mathematically, the new electric field has to be twice what it was before. My electric field, since I have no dielectric in between, my electric field is based solely on sigma over epsilon sub nine. So basically, I've doubled, I've doubled the charge that's on the plates, as we come through this round two. Now if I increase the distance to, so now if I double this, that has to drop. Because again, I'm hooked to the battery, that's gonna be fixed. So if this becomes two D sub naught, this is still two D sub naught. This has to drop back down to my original electric field, which is, sigma over epsilon sub naught. My area hasn't changed. The only way that this would drop would be if the charge drops. But it didn't. After, charge increased and then it dropped. Right. So ultimately, Brooks suggestion works. Yeah. Okay. So if we want, I mean, is, it, is there anything about us having to have the battery still connected? Like, is there anything we can do where we could? No, and that, I guess that's another manipulation. Connect, disconnect battery. So then if we were doing what I was, if we disconnected the battery and just double the distance. All right, so I was thinking, my original thought was, we want the charts to stay fixed, so let's disconnect the battery to start out with. Okay. And now let's manipulate something else. And then we double the distance. And so now, once my charge is fixed, my electric field is, is fixed. Right. We're not putting a dielectric in there. So if, if I double the distance, I, that would double the voltage. Okay. Yeah. That's what I want to do. Sorry, Brooke. 
It's okay. It seems simpler. And fight. So anyway, another style of problem. Would it be acceptable on an exam to just run through a bunch, bunch of different uh, possibilities until we find one that is correct? If you've got the time. Yeah. I'm worried that like thinking through conceptually is, I, I find that really intimidating. Now, one of the things that is potentially frustrating with this is that the implications of making one change, ultimately, you, should, you can find it different ways. Uh, years back, I did one of these problems. I gave too much information because, because I gave too much information, you were able to actually come up with two answers, two different paths. So, if done properly, you should be you can find it two different ways that should all mesh together. So, if we double the distance, we cut the capacitance in half. Capacitance is cut in half. That means that either voltage is doubled or charge is cut in half. So if the battery is disconnected, I know that's not changing. Therefore, that has we've just doubled the voltage, which is what we figured out using that equation there, using Harrison's method. Using the Harrison method. Harrison always wants to disconnect batteries first. Matter of fact, if he doesn't disconnect the battery first on his test. I, I think that's the end of life. It is. It is. And Brooke's going to keep it connected no matter She's what. She's going to keep it connected, and that's going to be her yeah, downfall. I wasn't, thinking, I wasn't thinking outside the box like you guys were. Like, you guys were like, disconnect the battery. And I was like thinking in my head that I had to stay connected. So. You didn't, you didn't no, put it on the board, and I just had to had to work through it. Yeah, um, that was the case. You should have read my mind. Yeah. And uh, I think that's, that's on you. But I'm right still? Yeah, no, you were right. You were right. <laughs> All right, I was hoping to get to parallel and series capacitors, but I guess that is going to wait. So just as a teaser, I got my, my capacitor here, and instead of having a capacitor like that, I now have two connections to it. So I still have the same capacitor, just have two wires, so the current's gonna to get to this point and split. And then the uh, next thing I do is I just put a little I break it into, uh, I got a capacitor here and a capacitor there. How has the capacitance changed from the original? And I'll leave you with that thought over the, for the weekend. Ooh. And I guess on that same thing, I have a capacitor here and I stick some plates in the middle with a connection between them. How does that change the capacitance? 